Welcome back, all you sexy YouTube nail mother lovers. Just a quick clean up before we crack on with today's marathon. That's right. Strap on your strap on. Yes, it's going to be a marathon. This is my very first long style video um, where I go into a little bit more detail and I absolutely will not be doing an and arm counter this time because I'm not sitting here for six and a half hours afterwards re-listening to my whiny Australian voice. So today what are we doing? We are using the Kirsty Meekin Unicorn Collection to make a unicorn. You saw the thumbnail. You know what's going on. I'm being very dangerous this afternoon and I am, oh, zoom in on the nails, zoom in on the nails. Um, yes, I'm being very dangerous this afternoon and I am recording during daylight hours. If the birds decide to scream outside, then so be it. I live in the bush, so there's not much I can do about it. Let's get started. Now I'm going to start with secret time as well as prep and base coat and we're going to do the Kirsty Meek and Prayer in just a moment but I'll start with secret time. I am absolutely petrified about this video going for 50 minutes but let me start by talking you through where the idea came from. So obviously it's called Unicorn so it's not a huge leap to want to make a unicorn out of the different areas of the unicorns, like the different colours. Um, so the snot, the tears, the tail and the flakes and all that sort of stuff. So I just drew a rough kind of unicorn. I googled um, cartoon unicorns um, on Google and I did kind of a mashup of a couple of different ones or bits of ones that I liked changed some ears, changed some wings, um, that kind of stuff, and worked through my colour palette, what I wanted him to generally look like, and then go through my Kirsty Meekin colour repertoire uh, to select the colours that I actually end up using in addition to the unicorn collection. I she does a lot of really cool uh, trick colors, I guess. And I was going around there making sure I had used all of the unicorn <laughs> colors, uh, just in case I had missed one out. Um, yeah, she does a lot of trick colors, so I wanted to take full advantage of the trick colors by using night glow. As my background and for those of you who are not familiar with night glow it does glow uh, in the dark you charge it up with your UV and it'll keep on keeping on it's a really cool effect you'll probably note there that it doesn't go on the smoothest it's quite granul granulating Granular. If it was watercolor, it would be called granulating. Uh, but yeah, it's got some um, particles that I know I said it's a piss poor glow effect on there. Piss poor glow effect, just because um, I couldn't bother turning the lights off. Ladies, I buff off screen. So here's something else that's buff. Gentlemen, I buff off screen. Here's something else that else that's buff. I'm not really here for Channing Tatum and whoever the one in the middle who's that? Zac Efron? Not here for them. Ryan Reynolds definitely. Um, and Pink definitely. She's a fucking legend. But uh, yeah, the other two I'll take it or leave it. Leave me down in the comments who you rather buff. <laughs> oh that's terrible. Don't listen to me. Anyway so what I'm doing here is using the pacer 
a piece of pencil to transfer the drawing onto the nail. See, it's all very well to have a flat drawing, but then the trick, and there's a couple of tricks to transferring that drawing onto the nail. And one is the scale, not only of the creature itself, but of his features that wrap around the nail. So his features need to look flat, even though they're actually wrapping. So his eye is not round, it's actually more like a chicken's egg to get the effect of being round. His trotters, uh, or his legs rather, and his trotters, they are a lot wider than what they look in the drawn picture because they need to cross over two different nail areas. His wings, I changed form completely because you lose the detail of the sweeping, uh, like the little bumps. So I turned them into big sweeping wings, um, but you'll see that come to life a little bit later on. And decisions like that are born of two things. It can either be a creative decision or it can be problem solving when you get those complications of doing art on a, a three-dimensional surface. Not many people are good at translating a flat drawing onto the three-dimensional nail. Okay. One job, you stupid nail motherfucker, is to press record. Yep, this guy did not press record for the first all of this area of pink on the nail. I apologise profusely. One day I will be good at filming. <laughs> Actually, I cannot promise you that. Um, I will not promise you that because I'm sure until the day this gives me the shits and I throw it through the window that I will continue to bugger it up. But essentially, follow the outline and make the pink bits pink. This is the part that is difficult and this is the part that matters. Trying to line up what you've drawn and what you're painting. Remember how you go outside the lines when you're colouring in? Similar evolution of problems here. It's all very well that I've gone and sketched onto the nail, but once the colour goes on, the shape refines once again. So this, to orientate you, I am now working upside down to get the trotters um, to line up. So that's what I was doing with that first alignment, was getting the trotters to transfer from the first nail to the second nail. And like I said, the, the trotters in the front that look quite skinny actually end up being quite a lot longer or a lot longer, jish. They end up being quite a lot wider just to translate that it is an actual trotter or leg, unicorn leg uh, on, on the nail. I hope you understand what I mean. If you, if you don't understand uh, what I'm getting at, please put your comments down below because I always answer all of you. It might not be straight away, but I do get back to you and I thank you all very much um, as always for your comments. Um, when you're curing you do you do so much flash curing when you're doing these kind of nails uh, and this kind of cartoon work you do so much flash curing I have not put anywhere near the amount of cure or flash cure little prompts in the video is what I should or what I, not what I should, but what I actually ended up doing there again, adjusting translation of his hind haunch around to his butt. Mom, Bart was taking a picture of his butt. 
on the last nail, making sure that they match up and don't look strange. So, yeah, what I was saying uh, with the... Oh, what was I saying? Flash curing. There's so much flash curing. It's crazy when you're doing cartooning or small kind of things. I put a few of the bigger cure areas in just to remind myself to tell you guys that I am curing it. I'm not just, I don't just have pink and purple and blue wet gel polish all over the place. You just couldn't do it all in one go you would not be able to do it it would run for a start and what I also didn't do was do myself any favors cartooning with nails this long anybody who does fine detail work any like fine lines swirls details anything like that knows that the closer you can hold your brush to the bristles the closer you hold the brush towards the bristles the easier it is for you to paint the further away you hold your brush from the bristles it's kind of like trying to paint with a three foot bloody tent pole it's just i don't know it's very difficult so the closer you can get the more accurate you can be when you decide to hang four inch nails off the end of your hand uh it makes this very difficult so i should have waited uh until i had a shorter set on but who's going to do that no not me never 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 uh, so I did put the names of El Schwenky and Silly Billy and um, the colours that I'm using on the screen because I knew that I always blurdy 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 blur uh, and get off on tangents before and I just forget I forget to tell you what colours I'm using so the colours will be on the screen uh, and the colors will also be in the description down below so another reason why you can see at this angle that his eyeball isn't round his eyeball looks more like an egg and it goes onto the next uh, nail as well in like the pointy part of an egg but I chose to use the night glow background to contrast the white eyeballs as well um void stands out against anything because it's like liquid paper really 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 white uh so i wanted the eyeballs to stand out against the background and i wanted something funky in the background so hence the glow and ooh, there's a really cool effect that comes later on so what am i doing here here i am using polar to do all of the what are they called shadows all of the shadows and low lights that I want in the unicorn I am using holla which is ridiculous because I've just said low lights and I'm using a glitter well <laughs> the, I know I know I know I know I'm mad mad as a meat axe but the reason I wanted to do that was because he's a unicorn so unicorns shadows are glitter do you do you not know that does your unicorn not glisten in shadow no well I tell you something <laughs> anyway moving on to void so at this point we've done all the unicorn color what i'm doing now is applying void in the areas that the unicorn color collection is going to be like the snot the trotters the horn um etc etc those colors work best over black said by Lord Meekin herself. Lord Meekin says that these colours are best over black. So everywhere that the Unicorn Collection will go, I am 
coloring in black basically I say coloring in that's kind of childish right I am painting black um, and as the painting of the black continues let us all take a moment to recite the Kirsty Meekin prayer it's been 15 minutes and I think it's time so join with me Kirsty Meekin full of grace hallowed be thy name thy infill come thy fapex will be done on earth as it is in stoke on trent <laughs> ah, i'm a mad 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 woman okay so i am now filling in our unicorn tears he's sad he's so sad um, this is the part of the unicorn that I dislike the most, and I'll tell you why. It doesn't translate very well front on. Why is that? Because I didn't draw the teardrop close enough to the center of the now. We'll talk about that when we come back to it. Now I'm drawing the tail um getting black on getting the outline on i wanted three swooping ish looking areas and i basically just filled it in and put little clicks right down the bottom the whole time during this painting phase or fill in phase i'm using the cassidy detailer I didn't go down to the messy messy. Um, I just didn't see a need for it in this stage. And I could have used the um, Miko Aqua or the Brendek brush or something even larger for the wings or for the belly to make it a bit faster. Um, but I like to paint with the smaller brushes. Yes, it takes a couple extra strokes. And yes, it, it just takes longer. <laughs> um, I just think it's more accurate and I prefer it. Um, this was the outline of the wing. In the original drawing, there were a lot of lumpy bumpy bits on the back of the wing but I just felt that you couldn't see it it just wasn't I don't know I didn't like it I wanted something that was a bit more I knew just a bit bigger so I could use more of the color and sort of lose not lose less detail but keep detail to an appropriate amount and not go ridiculous <laughs> with the amount of detail on this now because this took forevers people um with breaks and fuck up filming and all that sort of stuff it was six hours uh worth of footage that i managed to get down to a measly 40 50 minutes ah, make me feel sick it's not that i don't love you sexy youtube now mother lovers i am just nervous about having to talk about this stuff for that long and make it sound like i know things about and also not push the stop button with my fat gut while the computer sitting on my stomach oh my god that's so embarrassing. No, no. Oh, no. It's definitely, definitely time to stop eating like I have a winter coat and transfer to summer calories. <laughs> you know. Oh, dear. Okay. What am I doing to these poor little unicorns? Um so we've done our horny unicorn now we're doing our snotty unicorn uh, um, 
It, it is literally color the unicorn collection over the top of the void. So while we're doing that, let's just talk rubbish, shall we? Um, these colors are some. Will you use them every day? Maybe not, but they're certainly worth having. Will you use the holler and the holler explosion every day? Hella to the yes, you'll use holler every day. But it is gorgeous. Uh, but we'll get to the application of that. This one, while I'm slightly out of focus, it's not terrible. Unicorn Tears has a goldy tinge to it. It's probably my least favorite color, which is like saying, this is my least favorite chocolate bar. <laughs> it's still pretty good. It's just the one that doesn't have anything in it that's too appealing. But you'll see here what I say about the tear not being far enough towards the center of the nail. It should be at least another half a centimeter towards the center of the nail for it to really translate that the the tear that, that he's crying basically and you'll see that when we when we light him up in the end so the unicorn flakes the unicorn flakes i chose to put on his wings these are did I just say gorgeous? Let's find another descriptor. These are amaze balls. The balls are amazing. I guess unicorn balls would be full of mylar and glitter as well. Ew! What the fuck? Oh my god, Cadence, what have you just put on the internet forever? Oh no. Well. Hello, boys and girls. It's the luckier tickets not for kids, hey? Um, right. So this, I can't. I, I, I can't. I can't say that I can't unsee it. Now I can't unsee it. Now that I've said it, I can't unsee it. I'm pushing around the different chunks that are in. The polish. <laughs> I end up I'm removing that chunk, I think, because it's just too chunky or putting the chunk somewhere else. I don't know. But yeah, the mylar, the glitter is a really, really pretty, um, really colorful combination and it looks quite nice. This is the second part of the back of the bowels no the back of the wings being silly being silly um yeah the second part of the back of the wing um and i just i can't stop staring at it because it's full it is full of the the glitter and the mylar and you you'll see that i'm going slightly outside of the black don't worry about that because we've got a night excuse me dying 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 that's what happens when you're choking on unicorn okay i'm just gonna finish that sentence there um yeah we have an outline to go so don't worry that it's going over uh because don't worry that i'm coloring outside the lines with this because we're gonna um put an outline on and make sure it's all contained within that one area oh thank fuck we're on to the tail so unicorn tail it is awesome it's obviously my favorite because it's got the bluey purpley tones to it um the tail and the horn um horny unicorns with tails those two are probably my favorites because of the of my tendency to go towards uh bluey purpley color the cooler of the color wheel shall we say uh again this stuff is just color on color on color on color on color i whacked it on in the middle and with like two two little 
decants of the Cassidy Cassidy D Taylor and it it just goes and goes and goes it spreads for days you don't need it thick in fact the thinner the better because then you can see a bit of the black oh that was hair that's hair I did dig the hair out of there um yeah the thinner the better because you can see a little bit of the black coming through in between the particles and that is what makes the holographic nature or the shifting nature of these pigments so good is to see in between the pigments it's almost the you know it's almost the third person in the bottle so to speak which is a really stupid thing to say but there's more than just the color in the actual collection that makes them so good you can put them over absolutely any color i like the trotters because it's just a silvery color um there's no real shift to it it's just silver kind of like the tin man color but really really crazy fine these are crazy fine particles um and if you if you have a um a brush that you use for your fine particle glitter i would highly recommend using that brush for these particular colors so that you don't have to dehydrate your brush cleaning the absolute fuck out of it while it's got such tiny particles in it uh, you don't have to dehydrate your brush with the IPA and all that kind of stuff so what am I using here I am using explosion and holler explosion is like holler but the particles are bigger uh, it, it's exactly the same as holler but the particles are just bigger pieces of holographic glitter the liquid itself the liquid holy shit woman the gel polish itself is still nice and thin it's the typical Kirsty Meekin formula uh, but the particles are a little bit bigger than the rest of the collection apart from the unicorn juice that I've put on the wings of course so here we are at this stage in the proceedings so what are we going to do now now we're going to remove the sh sticky layer and why do we remove the sticky layer well that's because matte top coat does fucking weird things um and i am going to matte top coat now and as you've clutched your pearls and gone <gasps> why why would you do such a thing to such a beautiful shiny creature <gasps> why oh why okay i'll stop um i'm going to do that because um i'm going to buff it i'm going to apply a matte top coat and then i am going to buff and i'm going to make the surface as smooth as the unicorn's bum and then i am going to what am I going to do? I'm going to do the black outline. And I don't think I did my... Yeah, look at him, all matte. These are the colours matte. They're even awesome matte. Oh, and I even put a little sparkle over the top. Oh, he sparkles. Um, Yeah, so even under a matte top coat, these colors are pretty cool I have to say so over the mat I am going to oh yes fucking special unicorn maker putting my fingers straight into the void so I'm going to switch to my favorite tiny itty bitty lining brush sorry Kirsty but my favorite tiny itty bitty lining brush is the uh, D liner from the Dorota Polika. I know, I know every time, every single time I murder, completely murder that uh, name. 
But I can promise you that I did uh, buff after I did the matte top coat uh, to make it nice and smooth. And the smoother this surface is, the easier it will make your life doing the outline of this unicorn. If you've got bumpy lines, not bumpy lines, if you've got a bumpy background, you will never, ever, ever get a straight line without one, pulling your hair out, two, gaining a hundred pounds, three, losing 20 years off your life, <laughs> or um, just spending hours and hours and hours and hours and hours um, doing straight lines on a curved surface. Straight lines on a curved surface are just not a thing that is easy to achieve. So do yourself a favor if you want to try this, if you want to give it a go, just buff it, buff it and do yourself a favor. On that note, in the next video, I'm not going to do it in this one because it's too fucking long as it is. Um, I do have a couple of shout outs to do in my next video for those of you who have done some replicating of my nail art work. I am just absolutely flabbergasted and blown away that you guys would... Copy's not the right word. But recreate, recreate, there we go, that, would you, that you would recreate the, the artwork that, that I've done over the years, months, however long I've been doing this crazy shit for. Um, so yes, in the next video, I will have some pictures and some, sh 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 some, I will have some pictures, pitch oh my god, I can't talk. Some pictures and some shout outs to those of you who have done the art versus art interpretations. Thank you so very much. I'm humbled by that. It puts a smile on my dial. And they were reaching me through my Instagram. So I will put the Instagram up on the screen once again. And you guys can get in contact with me over on Instagram. No, I don't. I'm, I'm not fucking 16, okay? I don't check it every day. I don't maybe even check it every second, third, fourth day sometimes. But I do check it and that is the best way for you to tag me in your recreations or tag me uh, in the artwork that you're doing based on recreations it's just it's just awesome and i thank you all very very much i also thank all of you for your comments your comments not only on the videos but your comments on instagram as well it, this is a small channel and a small community and because i carry on like a pork chop and swear so much it always will be YouTube has a problem with speaking freely and YouTube will push down any person or video that says anything that it doesn't like. Let's put it in politically correct terms. No, fuck them. Anyone who speaks their minds and says the words that are on the naughty list, like shit and fuck and all that kind of stuff, it just doesn't push it out in the algorithm. And so people don't see videos who tend to use language. And I know it's nail art and do you need to, to use language? No, but it's fucking English, so I'm going to fucking use it if you don't like it. Click on a different video, I don't care. Um, I really don't. But for those of you who are here for it, who do like a bit of free speech, who are adult enough to cope with a few these and thous every now and again. 
I say every now and again, but what? It's every single... I've been pretty good this video. Come on, give me a break. I haven't even gone off on any real... Okay, I'm off on a rant at the moment, really, aren't I? But this is the first rant and we're 30 minutes in. Usually we're three minutes in and I'm off and ranting. So good on to me. But I'll continue this rant. Um, yes, YouTube, YouTube and its algorithm. In order to get videos, any videos that you watch, any kind of clout or push throughout the algorithm, you not only need to like it and subscribe to the channel and all that kind of stuff. Everyone says click the notifications. The notifications makes sure that you who are subscribed to that person are notified, duh, because it's a notification, by YouTube the next time a person puts out that video, um, or sorry, the next time a person puts out a new video, you will get notified. That is not a foolproof system. If YouTube doesn't like you within the algorithm, it can turn off the bell, not necessarily in your settings, but within the algorithm. And it doesn't push out the video well your next video if the one before it is kind of not performing well within the algorithm because YouTube only makes money if the videos on YouTube are getting pushed out to people and are playing ads and that's not how creators make money that's how YouTube makes money and that's all YouTube is really interested in let's be honest here and we'll get flagged for for this from speaking YouTube truths but not only do you have to like and subscribe to the channel, like the video and subscribe to the channel, but you need to leave a comment that is more than four words long. Why four words? Fuck knows. But within the creator community, it is noted that the comments need to be more than four words long. So if you're writing like, awesome or good video or stuff like that it helps but it doesn't do as much as what you guys do for me in the conversations that we have backwards and forwards on these videos sometimes and i know it can be a week or so in between uh videos for me especially at the moment with so much going on but Having conversations with the creators that you like. I know you're not going to get a conversation out of the Kirsty Meekins or the Dorota Palikas or the people who have got over 100,000 followers because they simply don't have the time. But it still helps their channel reach more people if you put a comment down. Even to Kirsty Meekin who has so many followers. Even to those... Um, like the long hair, pretty nails, um, who's got like a million followers. The, those videos still need um, your support. So if you're ever sitting there just clicking through and things like that, um, spare a moment and a thought to say, fuck you, YouTube. I'm going to do everything I can to support the person that I want to support, not for you to choose who gets advertising money and under what circumstance and who doesn't. Um, because we all know you need at least a thousand subscribers and you need a ridiculous amount of um, hours. I think it's a thousand subscribers and maybe a, a thousand hours worth of um, views every 12 months. So that means the creator won't earn money in perpetuity they need to keep creating in order to keep their revenue so it's not passive income anymore at all you actually have to work quite hard this as a platform to make any kind of money out of it um mm, the the secrets the more you know and here i am still on a fucking tangent 10 minutes later but all i'm saying is thank you so so much to everybody who connects and communicates with me. Maybe you know a little bit more about 
YouTube and take a moment next time just to appreciate what goes in, like the time and effort to, to do these things. Like I said, this is six hours worth of filming. This was two weeks worth of editing because I'm just, you know, everyone has lives. <laughs> this isn't my job. Um, it's been, it's going to be two hours worth of recording because my fat gut keeps pushing the button to turn it off. Oh my god. Um, and it's going to be another couple of hours um, chewing my internet in the middle of the bush trying to upload it to to YouTube. I have never uploaded a video this long so it, that in itself could take hours and hours and hours. I, I have no idea. Um, usually my sort of little 10 minute videos can take half an hour to 40 minutes. Do you know we have some of the worst internet in the world in Australia? the worst like we are not the third world country not even close and our internet is the slowest some of the slowest in the world i know third world problems right or first world problems right but it is so slow elon musk has bought his starlink to australia which is for regional places that don't have any actual wire connection like we have the nbn broadband um connection here uh but he's bought starlink to australia and people in the suburbs are using it because their internet is so bad and elon musk's internet from satellites is so much better than the stuff that they dug through the ground here in australia what a waste of money but governments hey you can't live with them can't kill them so wow there's another black mark youtube Ugh, take that i love doing eyeballs on these creatures because they look so zany and sideways um anyway so i'm using white out to talk about nails again now um yeah, the other thing is you guys haven't seen Gary the Goat in a while because I haven't had any thumbs down. Every time I get a thumbs down, I come after people going, meh, thumbs down. Um, apparently it can help the algorithm even if you do a thumbs down, but fuck you, I don't want my um, statistics to be anything but 100%. I'll accept nothing less. So if you're going to give me a thumbs down, fuck off. <laughs> Gary the Goat will come after you. <laughs> if you don't like it, Leave me a comment, tell me why. At least that's helpful. And then Gary the Goat will tell you to fuck off. <laughs> right. What's that? Um, okay, so here I'm telling you what I'm going to do. Here I'm telling you that we are going to Matt Topcoat again. And I'm going to buff it. Remember Travis Fimmel from Vikings? He was a Calvin Klein model. You're welcome, ladies. I didn't know that. So now that we've um, matte top coat and I've buffed off screen, I haven't um, put the last shiny top on because I'm going to put some gems on. Going to put a little butterfly sitting on his tail. Uh, these butterflies are from AliExpress, I think. And I'm just going to zippity zip zip zap zap that in place. Oh, cute. I thought that was a cute little touch. And those butterflies are really detailed in their facets. The other thing I wanted to do so badly was actually give him a horn. Uh, so I'm just applying some hard gel to each section of the unicorn horn. I am dipping a really skinny brush, applying the gel to each segment and then pulling the gel up in the middle, turning it over, letting the apex or letting the gel fall down to create a higher apex. And I just continue doing that all the way up his little horn. Um, I've always wanted to do 
this effect and I couldn't tell you the last time I used gel to do this. Remember when this was all the rage like forever ago? What was it like two years ago when people discovered that hard gel can be molded into stuff and things? <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's been a while since I've done this and I really, I, I wasn't going to, I was going to leave him all flat, but I couldn't resist, I had to. And then because I put one piece of sparkle on it, I had to put more sparkles on it, don't hate me. Um, just let the unicorn sparkle, let him sparkle, he wants to. Um, so... Yes, he got some gems on the end of his wings, and I also put tiny gems at the end of his tail. Why? Uh, I don't know. They really serve no purpose outside of making putting the glossy top coat on more difficult. <laughs> um, I just glossy top coated straight over the, uh, the hard gel. It wasn't sticky anyway, it was a non-stick uh, finish, but uh, that can sometimes cause problems with a top coat delaminating when you've got a non-stick finish underneath, so you can buff it up to help alleviate any uh, delamination that you're going to get, but I, I, I'm not going to bother for the sake of fucking an hour and a half worth of video and uh it being a display piece not a um not a piece that i'm going to wear but i would love to that would be so cute um i I'm, i wasn't going to bother the other thing is to request you guys to leave any requests in the comments of any videos that you want um either here on YouTube or on Instagram. I have got some really good ideas from some of you and I am going to do every single one of them. I think they're fantastic ideas. I want to hear them all. Any information, like we're going to get informational up in this bitch. Can you believe it? And after six hours of mucking around with unicorn pieces after an hour of me swearing and bleating about youtube we have a completed unicorn i don't know what to call him leave your suggestions for his name down in the comments make it more than four words but i don't know henry or hugo or eugene i don't know what's a good name for a unicorn so coming up in three two one will be the glow effect three two one glow okay so the night glow which is behind the uh silly billy pink colors they will actually it will actually glow through the silly billy so he will glow himself it'll come through the white out a little bit but white out is so pigmented um the glow is more because of the lamp that i'm using won't come through the black of course because that void is void but yeah i think his little glow see he's glowing still in the background um after you charge him up he'll glow for some time uh, in the background and he looks pretty cute if I do not say so myself. I'm just showing you some close-ups and some different angles so you can see how he translates over the three nails. You can see what I was saying about the tear. I should have angled the tear more up into the center of the center nail uh, which would translate the fact that he was crying a lot better. My husband came and said, sorry, I definitely stopped. My husband just came up and stuck something very unique through the door and... Bountiful <laughs> penis! Bountiful penis! Then we had a chat for <laughs> a couple of minutes um, about... Does anyone know what nippies are? 
you know what nippies are put it down in the comments we got nippies and we're pretty fucking excited <clears throat> okay so what was i saying i can't talk <clears throat> excuse me i have lost my voice after an hour worth of talking i have said more words in this video than i have in the last week and that's not too much of a lie <laughs> i'm giving you here all sorts of crazy close-ups and angles so that you can see the um sparkle of the holographic and the angle of how the legs wrap around the nails and the horn sticks out and his eyeball sticks down and around um i just think it was a really cool project i had a lot of fun doing it and i hope that you have had just as much fun watching it and again if i haven't said it already i really really appreciate you guys sticking all the way to the end you're all amazing this is what we use today unicorn flakes not tears tail horns um and trotters holla explosion and holla um just holla this is the Kirstie Meekins Unicorn Collection, and I will see you sexy YouTube nail mother lovers in the next one. Bye!